right. building some dryads from Age of Sigmar. Exciting. Yeah, I haven't built these before. I'm really excited about it. Um, you will hear various munching and crunching sounds because uh, we're eating. That's what we do. Yeah. We eat. And build models. Yeah. So it looks like there's four models per sprue, and they're otherwise identical. And then there's another four kind of like accessory sprues. It looks like this might have arms and just little additional parts. What's a sprue? This. This is a sprue. How do you spell it? S-P-R-U-E. Sprue. Mm. Um, and all the little guys that are on it here that we're going to cut out are called bits. Okay. Like with a Z. Bits with a Z. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so otherwise it looks like... Yeah. The heads and... I don't know. So it's... They're all trees, right? So it's kind of hard for me to tell if, like, this is the arm right <laughs> here, or if uh, if the arms are on here, or maybe it's a combination of both. So I think how I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I know I could use the directions, but I like I like just going kind of kind of more random. And they're kind of on these bigger bases too, which is nice. So I always like to get the, um, wow, that's way more than 16. Weird. Okay. Uh, so this is 16 models in this box and it came with, um, 19 bases, which is cool. Extra bases. Yeah. Um, but so I like to get, I like these because it's like the body is already completely Sorry, it's completely built, um, and you just cut it out, and um, then you just glue the other stuff on. But so what I like to do is, um, sorry, I like to get all of the bodies uh, standing up on the bases first, kind of regardless of what the model is. So like if it's like a space marine that would come with legs, and then you glue a torso on. Um, and then arms afterwards. I still like to glue the legs onto the base first because it kind of helps me see what the dynamic pose is going to look like and then I can model how it's going to be facing and action pose and whatnots. It sounds like you've got a pretty good system down. Oh yeah. How long have you been doing this? Nineteen ninety-five. Okay. Ish. Somewhere in that area. Um. I currently play. I guess my largest army is Astra Militarum. Which I've got um, uh, around 250 infantry models, and then another, I don't know, two dozen tanks. I built all those myself. Um, I have a small um, 
40K um, Titan uh, Maniple that includes a Warlord, a Reaver, two Warhounds. Um, some Knights to go with it. Uh, I have a Drukhari army. I guess what I could really boil this all down to is there's not a lot of things from Games Workshop that I haven't built. Uh, that's why I'm really excited about these Dryads because I've never put them together before. It looks pretty, like a pretty simple kit, which is also exciting. Because um, that kind of gives me some places where I can, I can find some variation that isn't necessarily um, accounted for, if you will, in the box. Uh, which is part of why I don't like to go by the directions. Oh. What do you mean by variation that isn't accounted for? Like... Um, so I'll take Drukhari, for example. Um, the first time I ever put um, Drukhari Cabalite Warriors together, I did what I'm doing here where I, like, I chose a piece um, and I punched all of them out of the sprue. And for Drukhari Cabalite Warriors, what that meant was I punched out all the legs and then they have a two-piece lower torso, if you will. It's basically their butt, <laughs> their butt in the crotch. Um, and there's a two-piece, so front and the back, you, you glue together this way. And then you put it on the legs. Um, and then from there, you can build the torso. So what I didn't know when I punched all these out um, and kind of put them all out on my on my cutting board here was that certain legs go with certain lower torsos and they're not mix and matchable. Uh -huh. um, and the problem was that uh, Games Workshop does a really good job with these sprues where, this is a bad example, apparently these ones don't have numbers on them but most of them have numbers because when they have that so it's like lower torso number five goes with legs six for example i didn't know any of the numbers were at this point so i just had to make it up um, and i found out that a lot of them didn't fit um, so then i had to do some trimming and so i got some unique cabalite warriors with lower torses that don't go with their legs so <laughs> some of mine are different than what you would normally see so variation that's not accounted for and so you did that once and then you're like, oh, I'm going to do this every time. No, I did that once and it was incredibly stressful. So then I was like, I'm never going to do this again. Because it added a lot of time doing all the trimming and making it fit. And so there weren't gaps. And I love building models. I love it. Oh, it's so much fun. Um, but um, I don't like spending an incredible amount of time doing it. And I don't like it when it's tedious. Um, so putting together, you know, 240 Imperial Guard infantry models with, they have zero, there is no way to give them variation. Like, there's four different poses for their legs, and their arms have to go a specific way, otherwise they don't hold the gun. Um, so basically you can choose between four different legs and four different heads, and that's it. That's, that's your Imperial Guard. And when there's 240 of them, it really doesn't matter. Um, if they have variation or not. Plus it's the it's the Astro Mill term, so they're not supposed to have variation. But anyway, um, yeah, so tedium is not something I look forward to. Right now I'm just kind of trimming off the flash, which is the excess excess uh, from what I trimmed off of the sprue. Especially where these guys are trees, I'm not worrying too much about making them like super smooth. Right. What I'm doing is uh, I'm being extra careful to get the, the flash smooth where I know that it's going to attach other parts. Um, so like right here on the neck, um, I want to make sure that the head will sit flush. And I've got an X-Acto knife over here that I could be using, um, but I find that I have a lot of control uh, with the clippers, and for the most part they're as, as sharp. Um, so I usually just stick with these. I'm 
What would be your favorite part about putting together models? Um, well, yeah, my favorite part about building models is like little engineering challenges that you don't really know necessarily exist. Um, so like, I might come to find that when I'm putting these guys on bases, um, they're going to be like really unstable and I kind of have to hold them or position them differently. Um, and then when you get to like bigger models, like the Titans, for example, uh, finding uh, like ways that you can build them so that they're, you know, not really static and they have like a, a really animated pose. Um, or uh, again, with finding the variation like the, um, the Coven Throne that I painted uh, last week was a... Uh, I added a bunch of uh, things onto it from the kit because it's a three-part kit, and that, that was really fun to do. So I really like being, I guess, creative, you could say, with the building process. We should do an episode where we go over some of your favorite projects that you've done. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, so now at this point, I'm just going to start gluing these guys to bases. Uh, and I'm just going to go through all of them. That's why I clipped them all out in the first place. And I just use just a little, little drop of glue on both feet. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put them at the back end of this base as opposed to kind of centered okay. um, for two reasons. Well, I guess the same reason twice, but... Um, I know that um, models tend to be larger um, in front than they are in back. Um, so they're kind of top heavy. Uh, not so much top heavy, but what you'll end up happening is in the game when you're playing. So this guy is one of those ones I was talking about. Sorry to change the subject, where he's like leaning forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got to let him, the glue dry on him a little bit before I move on. Um, one thing I do sometimes for that, uh, this guy's not going to work. Uh, so if I've got a model already glued or built, I can lean him on it. Um, but this guy's going to be a butt. What was I talking about? You're talking about why... I put him in the back. Further back. Yeah. Uh, so like this guy who's leaning forward, um, is a great example because I bet he's going to have arms that are kind of outstretched in, in the front. Um, and when you're playing the game, you want your models to, to kind of run in and be touching each other. Um, so I like to put them in the back of the base so that you can actually position the models together. Uh, Bear just went and got a light to see if that's going to help with the quality at all. It does, actually. Fantastic. See them really well. Is that okay on your eyes? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Dang. So I don't know if there's any science in this or not, but it's an observation I've made. And it could be orc logic, I don't know, but... Um, <laughs> it seems to me that when I use... Oh, that's a good point. I use super glue for all my models. I don't care what anybody says. Um, Super glue I like because it's brittle, but it's not weaker than plastic glue. And I like it because it's, or I like that it's brittle because when my models break, and models do break, um, if I used super glue, they're going to break where the super glue is which means they're going to break where the model is naturally meant to be put together. Which means when I repair it, it's going to be a lot easier. With plastic glue, what, what I've found is the bond... I just glued my fingers together. Um, the bond that plastic glue makes is often stronger than many of the smaller or, or more fiddly joints 
or parts that are already going to be in the model. So with plastic glue, when my model breaks, it's going to break somewhere it's not meant to go back together. And then you end up with some problems. So here's an example of me using models to just hold other models up while they glue. So I've found that there's one pose. Um, it's this one here that's just going to be difficult to... Nope, that's not it. It's this one. Uh, that's just going to be difficult to do, so I'm going to save those ones to the last. Um, so you can... Because then we'll have some that are already built or put together. Nice. Yeah. So most people don't use super glue. Use plastic. Yeah, super glue. I think it's recommended for use on uh, like resin models. Dang, and now I'm getting like a bunch of them that are being difficult here. So here I'm just going to use the glue that I already got on the base and just stick that guy in it. Um, super glue is recommended for models of uh, that are made of like resin or. Uh, especially metal, if you're using like uh, pewter models, super glue is kind of necessary for those because plastic glue will do like a chemical bond where it oh, melts I the plastic and, and, and then it, it just makes the model so it's not different parts, it's just one piece of plastic, which, like I said, creates problems. My, um, wow, well, that, that went down a rabbit hole. Uh, get used to that if you're going to be watching this. Um, <laughs> but the orc logic that I was talking about was it seems to me that with super glue, you get kind of like an initial bond that it's going to start to make. And then if that, so what, what I mean by that is, with this, if I put the glue on here and I just stick it on here, it's gonna make like an initial bond and it's stronger than if I take it off and then put it back on again. Um, so I try and make it so that the very first time my glue touches whatever I'm bonding it to is the last time I move it. And again, I don't, I don't know if there's any science behind that at all. There probably isn't, but. Time. Yeah, there's just quite a few of them in here that are very, very forward-leaning. It doesn't look like it on the box, because um, it's all like front-on poses. Yeah. Or uh, the picture is from the front-on, right there. Okay. Um, so it looks like this one is the one that'll stand up by itself, but all the rest of them are real, real fiddly. So this is a little time consuming, like I'm finding this a little bit tedious, but I'm reminding myself here that um, this is the whole body. So the only thing left that's on these sprues is going to be two arms and a head. And then maybe a little other, like some other little uh, accoutrement, if you will. Um, so I'm kind of doing what might look like two steps in one for a lot of other models. And those two steps would be? Um, Space Marines being the example, uh, where it's got um, like the legs, it's got two legs are connected together, 
um, and then you build a torso, which is in two pieces, and you put those pieces together. And then you put them on the base? Uh, well, how I would build them is I'd, I'd put the legs on the base, and then I'd glue the torso to, to the legs. Gotcha. Dang, man, that guy's being a jerk. He's got sass. Yes. What I'm doing to try and lean them here because they're so like small at this point is I'm just, I could probably be using these other bases too, but um, I'm just using one base here of a guy that's already on there just to put it on top of the foot. Um, and it really only needs like, um, like a minute, right? Not even a minute. Usually it's like, I'd say 20 to 30 seconds of like not moving stable pose. Um, and then they're good. Like this was one of the ones that was giving me trouble. And now he's fine. These ones are probably fine. Oh, no. Or they're glued together. One of the two. Yeah. So like they're fine now. Don't even need to worry about them. Um, yeah. That's kind of it. I'll just go through and... Looks like I'm over... Over halfway done now, which is nice. So I'm just going to not even expect that this one's going to work, and I'm just going to move straight on to the putting one on its face. <laughs> no more benefit of the doubt. We're going to have to get a Tree Lord Ancient um, next for this army, because I'm really, oh, yeah. that'll be really fun. That's a big model. Um, and it's a three kit also. The three kit models are really fun because usually they've got enough that you could build. I mean, it's, it's only got enough that you can build one model in it, right? Like it's only going to probably come with one set of legs. Mm -hmm. um, but it might have like two uh, different torsos in it and it's probably going to have three different heads in it and, um, and per the directions like each one of those is meant to be a specific way but um, it'll be really fun to, to find some some creative ways to get them all to look together and yeah that'll be really fun I'm excited for that <laughs> Like I'm already, I'm already, here we are. I'm building a kit that I've never built before and I'm already thinking about my next kit that I want to build. Yeah, that should be fun. Ah. So, there's this thing that I like to say, and it's, it's normal human interaction, which I struggle with sometimes. And what I mean by that is I just realized that a little bit earlier, Bear asked me how long I'm, I've been doing this, and I answered the question, which is fine. But the normal human interaction piece to that, that I missed, uh, would be, oh, well, this is how long I've been doing it, Bear. How long have you been doing this? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even catch that that didn't happen. Right? Like, that's, that's what's supposed to happen, but it didn't. So, Bear, how long have you been doing uh, miniature collecting slash Warhammer slash painting slash building slash stuff? So I'm going to answer the question in a way that is lengthy and maybe a little bit TMI for everybody. Do it. That's how, that's how I answer questions. Um, so it was, was it 2020? It had to have been. Yeah, it was last year. And somebody I had a crush on gave me a book 
uh, from the Horus Heresy. It was the first Horus Heresy book. And that, that was my introduction to Warhammer. Uh, we had talked a little bit before then about like some of the aspects of Warhammer, but not really anything too in-depth. Um, and so I basically just started reading. And I'm, I actually kind of characterize myself now a little bit as a Black Library fanatic. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to read all of the books, all of them. I don't care what they're about. Um, I really enjoy the way that most of the books are written. Um, but I have a hard time actually reading, so I use Audible a lot. And I also really enjoy the way most of the books are narrated as well. Um, and also last year, uh, got just started doing a little bit of painting. And... I really liked it, <laughs> like a lot, uh, and I've always liked to paint in general. I have some acrylic paintings and stuff that I, I've worked on, um, for, forever. But um, it was my first time ever painting something on such a small scale, and it's it presents a unique set of challenges. Also, it's like a water-based paint, which is different from acrylic. Um, and yeah, so that's that's kind of what got me really just interested and excited about. Um, miniature models. So it's really only been about a year. Um, if we include the first time I started reading the book, right? Yeah, well, that's part of it. <laughs> but um, my experience with models is, is pretty limited. Um, but I don't know. I, I really enjoy the painting aspect of it. Uh, I don't like the putting together aspect of it myself. I like watching it. It's really relaxing to watch, um, which is why we why the initial idea of, hey, maybe we should put this on video came up. Um, but, yeah, so that's it, really. That didn't answer the question entirely, did it? No, oh, it did. Okay, it over-answered the question. Oh, that's why we're here. <laughs> right, so the, the next step after putting these together will be you guys get to watch me, like, paint them. Which will be a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know if we'll do a video on the spray painting or not. That might be kind of difficult to film. Yeah, it might mess with the camera. Yeah. So we'll probably come back with these already pre spray painted. Pre, pre spray painted. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Crushed it. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about that uh, with probably a little bit of an introduction of what we did and how we did it. But... Um, so I cut everything off the sprue. Um, it hurts me physically to have unbuilt models in the house. Like I'm in pain when it happens. Um, and then further, if I have, uh, bits on the sprue still, uh, it hurts me. Um, so I cut everything out of the sprue. Um, and then whatever I don't use on the models, I'll put in little bins that I have, uh, just for my sprue collection. But so in this case, what was on the sprue, aside from the bodies, was um, their trees, I guess, right? So five arms. Presumably there's going to be some other arms on these other sprues. But then, oops, well, good thing they're glued. Then there's this little, like, accoutrement here where it looks like it's something that goes on the base. Sorry, I'm trying to get close to it so I can see it. Some weird little sprite or uh, like fey creature of some type standing on a twig. Mm -hmm. um, then, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe also a base piece or something. We'll find out, I suppose. And then one, two, three, six, seven heads. Um, as well as some other little base. Uh, just when I say base accoutrements, I mean something that just glues down onto the base. It doesn't actually attach to the model at all. So like, um, there's like a little, a skull here and some other little like stones and stuff and an owl. According to the pictures, they're in the trees. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Okay. But we can put them on the base. Yeah, we sure can. The stone is on the base. looks like. Yeah, but so we'll, we'll just kind of figure it out as we go. Um, 
So I think at this point I'm just going to cut these all out and then kind of just organize them. Just into little piles here, that's how I like to do it. Arms, head, heads, other. You know what? I'm move all these guys so they're not in my way. Standing on their own two feet. Mm hmm. Uh, branches. I think they're standing on branches. Wouldn't that be roots? Wouldn't it be roots? <laughs> I'm giving myself a cue to do an audio cut here. Um, just so you know, Tabby's voice is not carrying into the mic. Good enough. So does that mean there's not going to be any audio for this piece? No, there, there is. No, it's not carrying into the mic. Um, I just was going to cut out my voice and overlay it with the sound of you doing clipping. Got it. Um, but yeah, it's her voice is too small and the mic is here. Um, up on the top. So it's not, it's not reaching into the mic. Interesting. Is this like really satisfying to you to like clip all these things out? Yeah, super. Super satisfying. No, no, sorry, no, I'm, uh, focused. yeah, so. sorry if I'm being quiet here, I'm just, it's not so much a focus, it's just like, like Bear just said, it's, uh, this is very satisfying to me, cathartic even, and it's just, there is an episode of, What's that show? It's got Leslie Nope. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Where it's it's kind of far into the into the series. Um, but um, Leslie's like on the campaign trail, right? And she's like doing her thing. And uh, what's his name? Um, Gary or Jerry or whatever he is at this point, whatever mm -hmm. they're, they're calling him, um, is like just in it. Um, and he's, um, he's putting envelopes in, or not envelopes, he's putting letters in envelopes. Um, and it's just like all the letters are already, already done. They just need to be folded, put in the envelope, and then the envelope closed. And he's just got this system going where he's just very similar to how I was just like 
just there and just going. Um, and that's, that's what it kind of reminds me of. It's just very, not a thought behind my eyes, just, just going. Like meditation. Nice. That's um, painting. Oh. If I get into the zone with it, that's how it feels for me. That's nice. Yeah. I do not often get into that zone with painting. It is stressful for me. I guess. What makes it stressful for me is there's a vision of what I want to happen in my head for the, for the models. And the stressful part for that, for me, comes in trying to make that vision happen. Um, and also in trying to finish the models because I just want them done. Um, so yeah, I find, I find painting fairly stressful. Which might have something to do with why I find this so cathartic. And sorry, you're just like sitting here watching me organize models, but it's another thing that I find cathartic. Sorry, not sorry. That's oh, head. It's kind of interesting as I'm as I'm looking at these. Um, so I've also put together some, actually quite a few demonets of Slanesh. Uh, it's one of the other armies um, that I've got poking around, but. Um, looking at the heads to these dryads, I see some similarities in the Demonets of Slanesh, which is disturbing if you think about the lore aspect. These being an order, <clears throat> an order army. Okay, so before I start gluing anything here, I just kind of want to look at this sprue a little more in detail and see what we've got going on here. So I think what I'm seeing here is that this piece that I wasn't sure what it was before is like a back piece, maybe, that goes behind the head, or maybe not, I'm not sure, um, because I'm seeing quite a few more of them over on this. So I think they're meant to go on every single model. Do you think they're... But yeah, so what I'm kind of doing is I don't want to jump into putting these on every single model because I might not want to. And so what I'm kind of looking at is what other pieces on here are arms. And I think if I were a betting man, Almost all of them are. And I'm noticing right now that there's an L and an R on these sprues, which probably means left arm and right arm. Thanks, Games Workshop. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this sprue out, and then I'm gonna build a model. I'm just gonna build it to completion and see what it looks like. And I'm just going to choose pieces that look 
right, if you will, correct on the model. And one of the other things we did in preparation of putting these together is we went to a, a hobby store and purchased some um, like little plastic plants, like little plastic flowers and such uh, that we're going to see if we can use to kind of give them personality. Yeah, spice them up a bit. Which that'll be exciting too. I told him I want to make them pretty. Which I support. I support models looking however people want them to look. As long as I have one, I have one restriction. Um, I just don't want to have to ask what it is. Um, so like if I'm playing a game with somebody and they bring a model that's like all different looking. And they tell me up front, they're like, hey, this is a Tree Lord Ancient. And it looks like a Tree Lord Ancient. Sweet. Cool. Enough said. I don't need this. I don't need anything else. But they bring something and they're like, this is a Tree Lord Ancient. And it's like a Bloodthirster, right? And it's a complete proxy and doesn't look anything like it at all. Then I usually kind of... You have feelings about it. I do. I have feelings, yeah. But at the same time, I understand wanting to try something out, right? So like if it's if it's kind of like a one-time, like, hey, I really want to see what a, a true or an ancient looks like before I buy one on the tabletop. Um, so I'm going to proxy this Bloodthirster today. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. And to be honest, I don't usually see that type of thing happen where it's more than once. Oh, I see the L's and R's now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this guy's gonna be first. So among, I keep grabbing the same one. Among these poses, this first one that I grabbed is actually pretty static. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know exactly what that means. <laughs> but it's it's a note. It's a note that I took in my brain. Um, and I think it'll mean that instead of having like I'm kind of dry fitting the the pieces together. Here's what I'm doing, where I'm just kind of seeing what it's going to look like when it's when it's put together. So instead of, oof, instead of having this particular pose where it's like reaching out to grab people, I might have this one more of a, so instead of, sorry, this is hard when you're dry fitting. Uh, instead of having it where it's kind of reaching out forward like this, I might put it more down where he's kind of, Getting ready to pounce? Yeah, like just moving up forward type of a, like you said, getting ready to pounce. Um, so I'm kind of looking at what arms would be good for that type of a thing. And kind of keep a note of that in the future. Like The other thing that could be kind of cool, now that I'm thinking about this, is that you got some of these arms. Um, here, let me show a really great example. This is an arm. Does that, does that show up? Go up. Uh, closer? I know, I mean, sorry, that direction. This way, yep. okay. Okay. Yeah, come a little, there you go. Okay. Um, this is an arm, but like, it's just a tree branch. But then at the same time, you've got like, this is an arm. 
where it's like almost like a fully formed bicep and like a whole hand and everything. Mm -hmm. So it might be really kind of cool to do is these static ones who I would see kind of more towards the back of the, um, of the unit, if you will, mm -hmm. right? These ones are maybe still becoming dryads, right? Out of the trees. So I might use these more, uh, I don't know where I put it, the less formed arms. Not bicep -y. Yeah, the ones that look more like they're still trees. <laughs> And like they haven't turned fully into uh, arms yet, and in that in that regard, they could even even be kind of up and look more like trees. Yeah. And then, so as you were looking at your unit on the tabletop, it would look like in the back would have a forest, and then you have these dryads coming out of it, which I think would be really neat. It's really cool that you think of it in, as you're putting them together, sort of in that concept of how will this look as a group on the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's, that's an interesting note. I hadn't really thought about it until you just said those words out loud, but um, I tend to like to put all my infantry and my core, if you will, um, or my troops together first. Um, and I think I'm realizing now that that's because that gives me a better mental image of, well, I just noticed something. Um, it gives me a better like mental image of what the army is going to look like before I put my centerpieces together. So like my bigger centerpieces, then I have a thought of how is this going to look surrounded by infantry. Um, so what I just noticed was this piece... Uh, is kind of triangular okay, and it doesn't really fit as an arm because it's not an arm. Uh, it's got this triangular part in the back, so this actually goes on its back like that. Oh, because it's, a, it's like the tree bit yeah. reaching out through the top. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of glue on this piece here. And you don't need much glue at all. I don't know if I said that earlier or not, but it's like, I'm not really even squeezing this. I'm just kind of tapping the glue that's coming out naturally. And then I just kind of stick it in there and it's already like, wow. it just needs a couple seconds there. These, the bases are all textured. I don't know if you can see it probably, but. Um, if you tilt it a little bit further in this direction, by the way. Yep. Okay, it's textured, which is really cool when you go to paint it. If you don't want to put stuff on the base, like gravel or whatever, you can just paint it straight. Um, but it makes it, when you have things like this that have really small feet, uh, it makes it more difficult to glue it on there. Why? Because uh, there's less contact, like there's oh. less surface area for it to touch. So, now that I know most of these pieces are actually back pieces, like now that I know what to look for, that any time it's going to have that little triangular bit means it's not an arm, which is probably, again, why Games Workshop put the L's and the R's on here. Thanks. Thanks, GW. Um, I'm going to kind of separate these into arms versus not arms. Oh man, that one's big. So what I was talking about earlier with the not really formed arms might not be as doable as I thought. Now I say that, um, but now we can talk into some of the, uh, what did I call it earlier? Like unknown deviations uh, that you could do. Cause like this was the one I was talking about earlier, right? Where it's like, this is not an arm, but <laughs> it would, it would, uh, sorry, this looks like an arm to me, but it's not an arm, right? It's just a tree. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, this piece is meant to go in the back. 
But if I wanted to make this an arm, all I'd have to do is just trim this, this uh, triangular piece to a flat edge, and then it can become an arm. Okay. And that would, be, that would be pretty easy, neat little customization that I could do. This just goes on the base. Jeez. Oh, that's a back piece, that's why. I was like, what is this guy holding? Like, this is <laughs> something crazy going on here. All right, so these are all arms. These are all back pieces that came out of it. So there's way more back pieces than what I need is what I'm getting out of this. So I think what I am gonna do is actually jump straight into what I was just talking about. And I'm gonna make this into an arm because I think this would be a really cool looking yeah. right arm yeah. with this particular back piece. And again, we're gonna make this guy into like straight up a tree. So that didn't work how I wanted it to. That's what you have the exact enough for though, right? It is. So I'm, instead of cutting, I'm really just kind of shaving is what, how this is coming out. God, I love building models. <laughs> That's already pretty flat. I'm gonna try and trim it down a little bit more though. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, so great example of what I was talking about earlier, why I put them all backwards on the base. Mm -hmm. See how like this guy's, like, I'm, this is one of the ones where I, you know, I haven't said I don't want him like reaching out forward. Mm -hmm. And even then, right, he's still kind of reaching forward. forward a little bit, right? So what I meant by that is like if you take, if these two models are against each other, like you and your friend are fighting and playing the game, at some point, these two models are gonna end up like this as part of the game mechanics. Mm -hmm. And so like if this one, you can already see this one is almost at the, sorry, I guess I'll put it this way. This one right here is already at, almost at the front of the base, mm -hmm. how it's leaning. They get tangled. Exactly. Oh, and they're trees, right? So it's yeah. even gonna be much worse. But, um. Okay, so I've gotten that one, which I like a lot. And now I'm gonna take an actual arm, I think. So I chose not to do another arm. What did you choose? Uh, I wanted another one of these back pieces because I really like the idea of like that. I mean, those are your models, I guess I should have asked you. <laughs> and for the rest of these, I'll give you a little more input. Actually, no, you told me to build these, yeah. so I'm doing what I want. So well, I really like the idea of receiving a piece that's already put together and having sort of that challenge of paint this and make it look like really good. Um, and so like it doesn't really matter to me too much about like how it's put together as long as it's put together well um, it doesn't have to be by the book or by the rules as long as it you know kind of similar to what you were saying it looks like what it's supposed to be um and it doesn't fall apart when i touch it <laughs> gotcha
Um, so I recently read Dark Harvest by Josh Reynolds, and uh, it's uh, the their horror series that they've kind of come out with. I call it a series, but it's not. They're not all connected. Um, and the Sylvaneth play a pretty huge role in that book, and that's kind of what got me excited about painting these guys, like, outside of the fact that they're trees, and I love trees. Um, like, getting to see them in action uh, in a literary sense, and sort of get to meet them and understand a little bit their motivations um, was a lot of fun. And so I got, I got quite eager at the idea of, like, having these already be put together. And so the way that you're putting them together now kind of supports... Uh, some of that lore. That, yeah, just because like, they're they're these like twisted creatures, right? And I don't think that they would follow exact rules on how they're supposed to look or how they're supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Versus like you know, space marines, right? Right. Yeah, who are very like strict in their Codex Astartes. <laughs> So I've reached that point where I need to learn what these are for. And I'm thinking... You reached that point where you're thinking... Right, where I need to know what these are for. And I'm thinking that you're supposed to... Oof. Glue this to the head first. And I'm making an assumption here that this even goes on there. Oh, I found it. There it is. Yep, mm -hmm. that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Okay, so, got it. So, the head. I'll let Bear there kind of do the thing. All right, the head. Okay, the head. These things. Hats. Fringe. Hat, a hat I like. Okay, so this flips over, and you can see that little triangle, I think. Can you see the triangle? Yeah. Um, goes on the triangle of the, the front part of the body there. But then if you see there's like a back part there that's flat, mm -hmm. this goes there. So, so you gotta put that part first. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, Sub-assembly, if you will. Just do a little, little dab of glue. And this fits in there quite nicely. Like, very, very well. Which is, again, very, very satisfying. That's already done. And, you know, I didn't even look at what, like, the different ones of these things look like. Because there's quite a few of them. Um, ah, this one would have been better. I wonder if I can take that out. Ah, yes I can. Nice. Yep, so I'm going to do this one instead. And I like this one better because of the little leaves and flowers that it has on it. I'll just put a little, little extra glue in there. So then I'll just give that a couple seconds to dry. Meanwhile, I'll put some glue on here. Beep boop. Oh, and the battery has died. Dang. Sorry, I had a little bit of a battery issue there. Um, so I just put the glue on there. I'll stick this head on there. It's interesting, like, the way that these are put together. In what way? Um, well, it's all flat surfaces for one, right? And I would think there would be, like, notches or something to sort of, like, hook stuff into. Oh, gotcha. Um, to make them a little bit more sturdy. 
Um, but I can imagine that would make issues for glue. Um, not so much. Um, the bigger models that are more sturdy, that like need that support, um, are definitely uh, have, have notches like that. Gotcha. Um, but again, where Games Workshop recommends plastic glue, mm -hmm. Um, the flat surfaces work really, really great for for uh, plastic glue. So with the head on there, now I'm just kind of doing some other little of the base accoutrements. And I think this guy needs an owl. I agree. And I say I think because there might be some better little back pieces. Sorry, I moved him out of the way. There might be some better back pieces for that, but this guy is, is a little owly. Maybe we'll even put it on like his on his hand over here or something. Oh, I was gonna suggest put it on his head. Like just just perch right on top yeah. of his head. If he'll fit. Or maybe like his hat. Is the owl? Actually that might look really cool. Kinda like right, actually. So ha! That's what these are for. Because the owl is kind of looking not quite forward. Mm -hmm. Actually, I like that a lot. Right, right on the right on the head, <laughs> right on the dome. Ooh, it's a little. Oh, I lost it. There it is. Yeah, because this owl doesn't know what's happening yet. He's like, what's up, guys? Why is this tree moving? <laughs> oh. So I'm moving him back a little bit. Ah, this yeah, is better. Because... Probably a better spot. Not because I disliked how it looked on his forehead. Or their forehead. Um but because the owl is tilted forward a little bit, and I don't think an owl would sit sideways like that. So I'm trying to move it back a little bit where it's not gonna be tilty. I think that's it. Like there's a bunch of other little bits here, like a ton of variation that I can do with all these different ones. But I think this guy's gonna be kind of the one that's in the back, like I'm not really a dryad yet, I'm just a tree. And they'll get one of these ones that's more like way forward and I'll give this one like really defined, like that's a really good arm for it, I think. And like, this'll be another really good arm for it. I probably chose two right arms there, but. Um, <laughs> and then maybe give it something like, some of these back pieces have like very obvious, like this one's got like a skull or something that it's obvious to me that this, this dryad hung mm -hmm. um, on there itself. So like I'd want, Maybe something like this to be more for, far forward that this one has a little bit more personality going on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. I think we'll end the episode here. Um, I'll build the rest of these up uh, and then we'll kind of show like an after shot after we've spray painted them and maybe I'll talk through some of the decisions I made um, and then we'll get into the painting. I think that sounds awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And if you like what you saw today, don't forget to um, consider hitting that subscribe button and the like button and uh, leave a comment if there's something that you want to see us paint and build um, and, you know, put together in our own unique way. All right. Um, that's it, really. Okay, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> if you tune in to my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash J B Speaks. I release a new video every Friday on that YouTube channel. Um, and then, of course, the last Friday of every month is when I actually do a live stream to announce the winner of the free book for that month. So be sure to subscribe. Obviously, hit the notification bell if you want. No pressure. Um, and get notified when I release new content. I obviously, at the beginning of every month, do my Indie Author Connection interview. And then on the second Friday of every month, I actually have a Grimdark 
book club podcast that I do. The third Friday of every month is a little bit of a free-for-all. I kind of just put something up. It might be talking about my personal life, talking about a new upcoming story I'm working on, um, kind of just a wide range of topics. I occasionally do a paint with me or build with me for mini models, specifically to do with Warhammer. So I really try to make sure that there's a little bit of content for everyone on my channel, and I would super duper appreciate your subscription. My subscription goal for the end of this month is 3,000 subscribers. It doesn't sound like a lot in comparison to everyone else, but we've been hovering at 2,600 for about three months now, and I want to break that plateau. So if you wouldn't mind being one of my brand new subscribers, if you could just hit that button down below, I would really appreciate it. All right, that's everything for me. So I will see you slash speak to you next Friday. Remember to be kind to yourself and others.